three, two, one. <laughs> Since I can't replace the intro on these videos, the Green Men Gaming advert at the beginning here is being replaced with promotions for the Head to Productions charity drive. Head on over to our main channel for a video with more information. Hey, it's the new Headhunter space program. My car oh. just exploded. His car exploded. His car exploded. You should have been driving a two smart. Actually, you no. Been. They always explode all the time. Blame the, actually. blame the workshop community, not me. I had nothing to do with the vehicle. Those explode all the time, actually. The one here on Duna, it lost a, it lost one of its lights. Oh, I'm doing this stupidly. And this thing has really good lights. <laughs> anyway, we've had a merry time here on Duna, but. I've finally done all the calculations, and it turns out we do have enough fuel to get home. Kinda so he thinks. Kind of feels like we should have done that before we left, but shut up. <laughs> anyway, we have a million surface samples and a million pieces of science. We're going to be leaving all of this science equipment here, because it'll make the ship lighter. And this thing barely has enough fuel to make orbit as it is. I did the math. I did all the math. I even calculated Pegasus's orbit. I think the better question is now is, will it blend? Also, you've seen Kerbal videos again for obvious reasons. KSP2! KSP2! Well, I, I thought it was because of KSP1. Well, yeah, yeah, that too, in the meantime. It's our good friend here, Billy Bobgard. Ah, Billy Bobgard. He was on the moon for 13 years. <laughs> and man. yet he survived. He was at the moon base. <laughs> Jofty was stranded on on this planet for what seven years until he finally was able to go and get him. Ooh, no! Oh no! Well, I just broke the wing. Should I repack the? Nah, I shouldn't repack the parachutes. What the? No, no. Store all the experiments. Well, I just accidentally sliced the Too Smart in half. How did you slice a Too Smart in half? <laughs> Trying to pick it up, I picked up the wrong spot. Yeah, see, here's the fun part about this group, uh, for you folks at home. These guys have access to all my tech. <laughs> all they gotta do is ask. Mm -hmm. Even the God Rocket. I'm serious about that god rocket. <laughs> Alright, so. This should be a lot lighter. We took out all the science equipment and we dropped off the two smarts. Then we drove that to the ice cap. That's crazy. <laughs> Alright. So. What's that half circle thing you use to find angles? Oh. What, what were those called? We used them all the time in school. Protractor? The, no, the, the... I know what he's talking about. The, the, oh, crap. The um, protractor, right? Protractor. No. It's a protractor. The, no, he's talking about the half circle type ruler. Yeah, the protractor. It's a protractor, I just looked it up. Oh. <laughs> Crap, I thought... Anyway, I oh, left I the protractor at home. You'd think we'd bring that, but we didn't. Looks like we're Who connecting off the Duna mass relay. Good. That's serving its purpose. Now, ascent guidance. Very 
specific ascent profile, we need to be at 115.132 at an altitude of, let's call it 190. You know what? That's just gonna have to work. I don't know if we're gonna have enough fuel to reach that high. Wise words of Todd Howard. Okay. Let's try this again. We're just gonna do a quick jump to test this. Moon and back should be good. Alright. We're also gonna have to launch mm -hmm. on top of Pegasus's current course. Oh boy, have fun. Indeed. Alright. Engine's up. 115.132. And so help me God, if we're not going over the ice caps, when this thing, when this thing's autopilot kicks up. It's a night launch from the looks of it. That's fine. All right, that's good. What are we bouncing Ooh. off now? Bouncing off Pegasus that's bouncing off the Duna Mass Relay. Uh-oh. I love comm networks. Uh-oh, what? Uh-oh. That, uh-oh. Well. All right, here we go. That did not cooperate, probably because of the key part. So we're going to shut down this engine and activate the arrow spikes. How do you keep breaking my too smart, by the way? <laughs> Uh, your two spray is breaking everything else, actually. Is your division of the of the Head Hunter Space Program just run by a bunch of loons? That thing is so idiot proof, it's astounding. No, my division no, my division of the Head Hunter Space Program is to find ways to break crafts with the two smarts so we don't break them again. We're trying to make it more and more idiot proof. Goodbye, Duna. Although I think I know my mistake is because I forgot to put a strut on. As right. a result, the tooth part was just uh, sort of flying around in the. I don't know the why thing. this thing is wobbling. Boom! <coughs> mm. That's some wobble. Maybe it has too much control. This thing has advanced inline stabilizers on the tops and bottoms of the fuel tanks, as well as the advanced one in the middle. I could turn the. I did not turn off the reaction wheels of the command pod. Oh my god. And good news, we're going over the ice caps. At the wrong angle. Good job. More left, please. Stop going in the. Stop going in a left. Shit. No, go in the left direction. Go in, not in the right. Come on. Oh, that was the issue I was having, controlling the there plane. We there we go. Oh, I see. I'll see another problem. Uh-oh. That might be an issue. Go to 80. Ah, well, we'll see. Bring us up to 80 degrees. Uh, okay, we're okay. Come on, take off your pieces. Come on. Oh, oh this oh. is bad. Yep, this is bad indeed. I lost half my wing. I have to do a course correction. You seriously think I have the fuel for this? You should. I do not. But you should. This thing's on a very tight fuel budget. You should have budgeted a fuel, uh, a fuel correction, a uh, course correction. That was your first mistake. I swear, if it's because you're bouncing around back here, I will kill you. Boing. Year 57, day 415. That was yesterday. Load that. All right, we're going to try this again. Yep. All right, we're trying this again, 
And I think we can launch into the target's plane now that I've set Pegasus as the target that we're trying to hit. And by hit, I mean dock. Of course. <laughs> of course. Actually, what's our current... Uh, orbit info. Inclination of 44 degrees. How about the targets? Oh, hey, it's flying. You need a million RCS nozzles to keep the nose up, but... <laughs> That's probably what my problem was. So those who don't I didn't have know, that. He, uh, <laughs> So I folks over here, he has uh, the game up on his computer, and we're screen sharing all of our progress. Now, launch. Do it. What do you mean, T minus one day? Just do forty four. Where do we go then? Where are we going? Did you just detach something? I did. Okay. Ah, shit. Make that ten degrees. That's broke that hearing that threw me off so much I'm like, alright, why did I detach my accent? That's worse. Shit. Alright, fuck it. Get the quick save up. Yeah, I know. Oh, I it always that have one. a Okay, we somehow have launch. We were going the wrong angle this whole time. But I think I got it this time. Now the, question, now the question is, does he have enough fuel? Mechanical Jeb coaxes out of the atmosphere, which should save us a boatload of fuel. I think we're at the right oh. angle. We are at the right angle. We're actually launching like really uncomfortably close to it. It's not ah, a perfect right. angle, but I'll have enough fuel to correct during the right. rendezvous. Right. Mech does not work on planes. Right. No. You do know aircraft autopilot mostly is just to keep it going straight, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I know. The atmosphere's fucking thin on Duna. I'm not here enough to get a grasp for it. I was about to say, am I still hearing that insufferable beeping noise? <laughs> no, I, I'm not. Holy crap, the stage one engine is going to carry us all the way into orbit. That's... wow. I drastically underestimated how much fuel this was going to take. But then again, this is the good lander. The really good lander. It's specced for everything but three planets. And which ones were those? Eve, Tylo, and... Some uh, lathe. Mm. I was about to say some other rock that nobody cares about. 
People like Leith, though. <laughs> All right. Ascent guidance is done. Asc See, the attempt to, to the attempt today, for me at least, is to get to Moho with this thing. Moho with that thing? Yes. Today? That's the attempt. So you got Jab, Bill, Bob... And Valentina. I see, yeah, I see Val in the back there. I can't find Val. I don't know what happened to her. Did the Kraken get her? I don't know. She just sort of despawned one day and never came back. <laughs> mm. Alright, so... Rendezvous autopilot. Sometimes I forget that they added female Kerman. And then I see Valentina, I was like, oh yeah, that's right, that was a thing they added. I only ever play with Bob, Bill, and Jeb. I am given a constant reminder that there are female Kerbals with our number five Kerbal knot, Mr. Kerman. <laughs> Again, a female Kerbal. Did you name her that? Or no, was it... I did not. The <laughs> game randomly <laughs> generated that, which makes it all the more wonderful. That's great. Alright, I think it just matched uh. planes. Wait, that's all, right. all the... Wait, that's all the fuel you needed to match planes! Huh? Are you talking to me? No. Oh. I should have probably checked. Well, to see you if there see was this action. angle, right? Uh, I'm kind of focused on my own thing, so. Just throw autopilot on that thing and go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that easy. Now, there probably is an action group. I should have checked my action groups. Not think that through. Should be jettisoning jettisoning the engines here pretty soon. Surely, well, we don't have enough fuel in stage one to get all the way back to the Pegasus. See, that's what you think. That would be crazy. Why did I put a decoupler over the main capsule? Surely there's not enough fuel in, in our main landing stage. Surely you just, how is this possible? Time you want to turn some lights on at some point there, Jeb or Billy Bob Guard or Mr. Kerman. Gets me every time. <laughs> every time. Hello, Ike. How are you? Messing up my flight paths. Friends. I've never been to Ike. Passing through the upper atmosphere finally. You want to know how you get to Ike in this game? Hmm. Basically, you pretend to go to Duna. <laughs> you pretend to go to Duna. And then Ike just grabbed you. <laughs> <laughs> I just grabbed you. <laughs> Every time you pass the orbit of Ike, doesn't matter where it is, it will, you at some point will get an intercept. And when that happens, just just go to Ike. That's basically how you do it. Is it how much M slash S would we need to get to Ike? Uh, good question. A so, number that I don't have off the top of my head. Seventeen hundred and eighty meters per second. And then 690 back to Kerbin. That's not bad, actually. Pegasus could do it in its current config. In its current config. We need to get rid of the engine. 
For those of you at home, I have a new engine lined up, and it's... It's in final prototyping, and it'll get us anywhere. Theoretically? No, not theoretically. Fuck that. Moho requires the largest amount of Delta V to go from low orbit Kerbin to low orbit Moho. And it's 7,640 meters per second. Getting back to Kerbin is 6,540 meters per second. I have specced the engine with... You remember I set that goal last night for... What was it? Yes. Very high amount of Delta V. It was a very high amount. 16,280 meters per second of Delta V. It, technically, you can get away with uh, a little over 10,000. Yeah, well, point is, got it. Oh, okay. This engine is actually specced for that. The only problem is, it's a piece of shit. Oh. oh, we're burning again. Yes, I know I am. No, I meant... Oh, wow, your thing is burning. <laughs> yes, it is. 39 meters per second. Okay. All right, I think I'm being... I am being pulled back in. Son of a bitch. How okay, this... much money are we betting on this thing's... Landing stage engine being able to carry it all the way back to Pegasus. This did not go over well. Okay. Place uh... your bets now, ladies and gentlemen. Place the. Okay. Update. There's Pegasus. <laughs> <laughs> There's Pegasus. It's right there. <laughs> What the crap? The problem now is it. if we run out of fuel here, we it's gonna auto eject those engines. I better not run out of fuel then. There isn't a fuel hose connected to the large tank in the middle. How do you have your separation for it? All four of the pylons come off. All at the same time. Then it Do you cuts have to, like? Then it cuts to the engine in the middle. Okay, so you don't have anything to jettison them away then. What the pylons? Uh, or the yeah. No, that's what these uh, these here are for. Once these run out of fuel, they all fall off. Hmm. Thing is, you have to have landed by then before you run out of fuel on that. Well, look what you didn't do. No, I landed. Well, okay. I don't think you understand what's going on, man. Well, well I do know this. Um, little trick. Where is your docking node on the uh, Pegasus? The front. You can have the docking nodes target each other, and you can just zoom right to them. I know that. Okay. But you can only do that once you get to excruciatingly close range. And unfortunately, no. this thing decided to come up on its engines. Hmm. It needs another one meter per second. Remarkably efficient. Remind me to use more aerospike engines. It's incredible. <laughs> this thing is performing horrifyingly beyond design parameters. The question is what is it running on at this point? <laughs> 11 liters of liquid fuel per tank. Jeez. <laughs> 
See, these are supposed to fall off during the ascent stage, and then you go over to your main tank, and then orbital maneuvers are done with your bobcat engine. Everything, uh, everything was going according to plan, but then these the main engine. Hmm. Eh. Everything was going according to plan, and then these main engines decided not to run out of fuel. Jesus Christ, you're still burning? It's right there! Stop! McJeb's like, no, I insist upon perfection. I must he be perfect. perfect. Never clean! Never clean! <laughs> Who's texting me? Okay, disengage the fucking autopilot. Hit up SAS so you stopped spitting! That's good. Alright, now retract that. Now retract that ugly dish. Alright, I'll be right back. Because that's going to get in the way of docking. Control from there. And then... We CSU, gotta, can I call? We got to open up the docking port. There we go. Bob, Filden, Bill. All of our friends are here. Even Joffkey. Alright. Control from there, and then we'll set that as the target. And then docking autopilot. All right, there's no reason as to why it it would have to waste a million gallons of monopropellant on this. Is that the speed limit to like five, though? a million gallons of fuel. Stop that. Stop any time now. Please. Please stop. Oh my god. <laughs> I worried about this ship making it back. Why did I worry about you? Where are we going now, buddy? Where are we going now? Alright. 
Yeah, yeah, you're all right. You got gallons and gallons of fuel. Like, this thing has so much fuel left, it's quite frankly scary. That's why we get the big tanks. We get the big tanks on these things. <laughs> I feel like I'm stuck in a rut, actually. Why you say that? Every core design I come up with has a Mark III command module, followed by advanced reaction wheel, a giant RCS fuel tank, a main fuel tank, and a bobcat. Hmm. Then I just sort of build around that, because it's a solid core. No, so that's the Starshot design. They used to be old Munshot command modules. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. I mean, we're the old days of Kerbal. Uh, anyway, I opened up the Pegasus forward docking clamp. Because it's a shielded one. I love it. The front of it is very ugly, though. It's not a pretty ship. <laughs> Remember for a shakedown cruise, we tried to bring the lander back to Kerbin with us? Because it had enough fuel to carry some guys home? Yeah, we're not doing that this time. Fuck that. <laughs> we're smashing this thing into the ice caps. <laughs> oh boy. Reduce speed to point two. Because we were going five. But that was just because, oh my god, it docking is so slow. Like, really slow. Like, in terms of what NASA actually does when docking in real life, this is considered booking it. <laughs> How fast does NASA go? Like, point half? Point or not oh point, like... two, I think it is. Mm. Here, hang on. Space station docking speed is... <laughs> 0 0.1 feet per second. Wow. We're going at point two. <laughs> Point two meters. So, uh, a little bigger. It's a little faster. I mean, you know, it's all right. KSP has a little leeway. It is all right, actually. Oh God, I love that. I love that thing spinning. I love the spinny dish. I love that. Oh yeah, now there's now there's rotors in um breaking ground, isn't there? Oh, yeah, that's another thing. We're getting a new tool shed. Hmm. Because every time we fire the engine, these arms want to kill me. I think they're both working in tandem against me. There might even be a plan. Granted, I don't think I built them right. We're going to try again. Don't let the Kraken hear that. Cracking an orbit of Duna. Mm. Cracking can just strike anywhere, you know. <gasps> except, the, except the too smart. That's true. It hasn't hit so too I'm not smart sure yet. About that. I. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for She's your input. That. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for your input, Alexa. Thank you for that. It was a time that, like, Howdy, all Lord, the wheels yeah. fell off the two smart. That's about as close as the Kraken probably got. It, it, it was going too fast. <laughs> the great part is, uh, the great part is we were on the Duna ice caps and it made a fantastic bobsled. 
<laughs> it did though, for reals. <laughs> That was the uh, Jofki rescue operation, I think it was. We had to go get Jofki. He was stranded on the ice caps. His bike ran away. It was awful. <laughs> Poor Jofki. Yeah, but he's better now. He's been everywhere. Jofki's my Eva? main guy. Everyone goes with Jebediah. I'm like, no, Jovki. This man was on Duna for seven years and did not die. And then upon coming back, immediately went to the money and rescued Charlie. Sole survivor of the Mobile Mun laboratory accident. What oh. happened there? Uh... Parts stopped being supported, so it it, it it took it out of the save. Ooh. He was outside at the time! <laughs> he got lucky. So naturally, he's just sort of sitting there like, what do I do? <laughs> what do I do? Help? Is that help? Alright, so we've ducked. Now we need uh, Jeb here to do an EVA and get all okay. that delicious science out of the capsule. As well as samples and just pretty much everything we grabbed from the surface. Including a meteorite. Well, all right. <clears throat> yeah, we got great, great finds on this trip. All right, we're going to... Stow it in. Actually, take it to the lab. Jesus, this thing is tall. <laughs> like, you don't realize it until you go on EVA. My god, this thing is tall. Alright. Sorry, Jeb, you can't board the lab. It's full. Fall. Labs fall. <laughs> hey, I think the bridge has an open slot. Bridge, 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 bridge. Alright. Holy crap, you didn't fall off. Congratulations. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's a fucking refinery hidden inside the fuel tanks. <laughs> Too bad we'll never use it because we're ditching this engine the moment we're back. <coughs> Alright, and surely I'll I can select that stupid thing. Yes? Yes? Select the crew hatch. Just transfer them out. Oh, here we go. Big old button. Transfer crew. Yeah. Put them in the crew compartment. That's where the crew goes. Is it? Don't question me! <laughs> I thought they belonged in the engine compartment. No, that's the engineering deck. No. That's where all the red shirts go, then. Who's in there now? <laughs> I know that there's someone in there. It is Jofki. Good old Jofki, keeping the engines working. To the extent that you can keep this thing working. Huh, All we're right. doing the oh, hi, Blazing. Oh, Blazing, you joined just in time for the grand finale of this video. Or you could say nothing. <laughs> that worked too. I'll be back in a few. Something came up. Oh, for f <laughs> Not my ten out of ten. Emmy, Oscar, ten out of ten. But look in the lab and tell me if that counts as a landing. Sure. Yes. Most of the pieces are intact on a space plane. I consider that good. <laughs> Seriously. I'm
I'm not even kidding, that's the sad part. Alright. We need this thing to aim straight retrograde. Oh, of course. Straight retrograde is basically right into the hull. That's a bad idea. Working on it. We need to work on the uh, RCS balancing on this ship. It's off kilter by a lot. Did I seriously just reorient the whole ship's trajectory though? No, that's clearly not retrograde. Oh, wait, that's right. Unset target. There we go, there's a retrograde for us. All right. And burn! And we're out of fuel. <laughs> it ran out. Yay, just enough. I don't know, did it break Atmel? It did! <laughs> Actually, I don't know. I turned on the Bobcat. I think it had just enough. God damn it. Arrow spikes. <laughs> Arrow spikes are... my new favorite lander engine. And this is my new favorite lander design. <sighs> oh, look at that frame rate. Oh, this is beautiful. I've been dealing with lag on the Pegasus. Anyway. Time for an explosive finale. Actually, I got a dumb idea. Are you going to try to land it? Suicide burn. Suicide burn? Basically. We give it literally everything she's got left and see if we can land. You could. How much Delta V you got left? 357. That might be just enough. No, we're definitely going at 917 oh. meters per second. <laughs> Never mind, it might not be enough. <laughs> Well, let's just break shit on the way down. What's the worst thing that can happen? Oh. What don't you need? Oh, it's on fire. Oh, it's on fire. Great. Okay. Well, I guess we do Oh, solar panels fell off. Oh, well, you I didn't guess... need those. Anyway, I guess we don't, we, we don't need these either. Oh, God, you know how we could have got this to survive? Just repack the goddamn parachutes. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You know, I'm surprised that one solar panel survived. Actually, yes, that is very surprising. Oh, holy crap! Where's the mechanical jab? Landing, 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 landing. Where's landing? There it is! Uh, land somewhere. <laughs> you don't have landing gear on this thing, do you? No, I just jettisoned it all. <laughs> oh, oh uh, no! Are you gonna burn? Nope, it's too late. <laughs> it's too late to apologize. Suicide, suicide. Wait, oh my god! <laughs> land somewhere. <laughs> oh shit! <sighs> We're stuck at 43 meters per second. Slam it! Oh my god! <laughs> I've heard that. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. At least the command module survived. <laughs> 
And it's upright. <laughs> it's a house now. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's a house now. <laughs> 10 out of 10 landing. Oh, How I expected. That'll do it for this lander, ladies and gentlemen. It has now been converted to a house. <laughs> the next video, we're going to fly home. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, go ahead and hit the like button really hard with your head. And send us names for I colonies. Do that all, I already do that. Send us names for colonies in Kerbal Space Program 2. Because we, we're, we're putting together a list now. I just decided that. Fair enough. I want to do Jeb's Landing and Joff Key City. Those are the only two I have so far. Mr. Kerbin something. We have to do something with Mr. Kerbin. Mr. Kerbin's Wild Ride. Mr. Kerbin's Wild Landing! That's like every time he goes to space, though. Come and fly away.